Hey there, traders. Welcome back to another daily recap for Friday, September 20, 2024. My name is Sam Morton, and what we do here each day is start out the morning by identifying levels of support and resistance in the SPY that we use for entering trades in the S&P 500 E-mini futures, also known as the ES. We do these throughout the day based on the levels that we have identified in the morning. There is a process that we use that has a high probability of grabbing successful trades at these levels. Right now, it's about a quarter before 8 a.m. Eastern. So today is the last Friday of the summer, and you know that the market is usually slow on Fridays during the summer, but we're also up against monthly and quarterly expirations, options expirations today. So this could make the market do unusual things, but the levels we have on the board should be good if everything else looks good if and when price gets to a level. I would say that if price is moving slow today with low volume overall, then these levels can be somewhat precise. If price is moving a lot and volume picks up, the levels will probably have less effect on price. It's just good to be aware of what price looks like on larger time frame charts before making any trading decisions. That's what I do. You notice the two levels on the bottom shown with dashed lines. This is a zone where price could react anywhere from within it if they get down there today. After the closing bell, we'll come back to the same chart to discuss any trades that may have resulted from today's levels. And any profit gained or loss incurred for the day from trading these levels will be logged in a tracking system that we'll go over at the end of the video. This way, you can see the long-term effectiveness of this approach. Before signing off, we'll look at some larger time frames to get an idea of what the near term might look like. I'll catch you on the other side after the market closes. And we're back. It's actually the next morning. You might notice this, September 21st. It is Saturday morning. Didn't trade yesterday. Pretty busy. And then had some things going on in the afternoon and the evening. So I got in late and just decided to make the video this morning. So two levels were hit. Pretty obvious. I kind of wish I had the ability to trade today. Or sorry, yesterday, Friday, because they were easy trades. So let's talk about them. So first of all, after 9.45 or 15 minutes had passed, they were under this level of 568.53. So I'd pull it down five cents to give a buffer to it. Let's go ahead and just do this one here. They're above it, so we'll add it five cents to 566.20. So there we're set. Now, I've been noticing this a lot lately. Like if price is coming up pretty soon and hit these levels and pull away, like this happened at 9.39. So that's a base hit right there. I mean, they that was clearly overhead resistance. And so after 945, you know, they didn't do anything for quite a while. They did eventually, but that was just an easier, cleaner trade. And it's, I've noticed them doing this before my 15 minute cutoff more often uh, lately. So I'm probably going to do some more back testing and just kind of experiment with a few things. But in my experience over the long term, when you price settles in after 15 minutes, it's a little bit more predictable. Like for example, let's just say price was going up. They got above this level and now it's 15 minutes after the opening bell, they come back down. Yeah, I'm definitely taking a long trade because they've They've gotten above the level. This is, this is an important area. They've Early they fought to get above it. And so it's a short trade would not have worked, say, for example. Like the first time they hit it, say at 940 uh, or whatever. That's neither here nor there. I'm just going to give you an idea of why I like to let that settle in. But in this case, it would have worked out really well. If you took it, great. That's fine. So they got down to here, not close enough for a near miss, a little bit of a bounce. They found some kind of support here. So when they got down here, it's not a, too surprising they got below the level. It's not too surprising they got below the level before they found some support. Here is your profit objective in the green line, and the red is the fumble threshold. So what would have happened? When you were triggered in this trade, you would have gone long with some even contracts here. It came up a little bit, but that's no big deal. You got below, and so you're out of the money quite a bit down here, but looking for certain closes. Also know you've got a safety net down here, this this zone, which could be important. But anyway, they got back above and gave you a base hit and then some. You could have trailed this, but you know, with this type of pullback, you probably would have been stopped about. But the point is, a base hit would have been easy if you just gave it time and played by the rules. Now we're, now they're back up to the level the, the second time here, which they had hit it before. But, but once again, I'm not really counting the trade because it happened before my 15-minute cutoff. So now we're looking for them to come down. 40 cents or more, which is the equivalent of four points in the E-minis, and they did that. No problem there. You've got the fumble threshold above. And you could have trailed this one longer if you wanted. Let me show you another reason here. So you'll notice sometimes, let's say I just take, if I take four points off of base hit and I put a trailer of four points, odds are it's going to get stopped out on the remaining position. What I'm talking about is say I sold two contracts, took one off back here at a base hit, 
and so I've got one left. I put a trailer at the break even, which is four points behind current price. Usually that will come back and get stopped out. So that's why I like to put a trailer that's out of the money a little bit, say five points or six or somewhere up here. But it's better to get more than four points. If you were able to get more than a base hit of four points, say you got six, then it's easier to trail, say, a seven-point trailer, and it withstands more. You, you've given yourself more leg room for it to come down farther. And they bounced off this level again, but this was already traded for a long trade, so I'm not going to do it again, but you're welcome to. And then let's see what they do. This is 3.22 p.m., so... For my line of sand, I don't I don't like to enter trades after 3.30. And once again, they bounce down. This is enough for another base hit. So they ping-ponged between these levels. And there's no reason you couldn't have had at least two base hits on Friday. So what did they do on the daily chart? Well, pretty much a doji candle. Pretty decent volume. I mean, at least it's above the 90-period moving average. And it wasn't surprising that they came down. I said this a couple times. And I'm going to show you something on the weekly chart that uh, gave you another indication that this was at least an interim high plus just the signal. But the point is they close. Let's see, where did they close? The actual close was uh, 568.25. So that close is below the high of this a couple days ago. It is right around the low of yesterday. So they're kind of, they're probably trying to make some decisions in this area. But remember the weekly chart that we looked at a week ago? that had to this trend line coming up here. Now, when we looked at this, it was, I think it was here, uh, back on the 13th, Friday the 13th. That that Friday, we had a video. You can go look at it. I'll link it, link it above here somewhere or at the end of the video. And just talking about they were bullish and there was a trend line up here and something I might talk about the next week. I haven't, I didn't talk about it all during this previous week here, but I'll just mention now that when you look at this on a daily chart, this this you can sort of you can tell here that they came up here. This is the end of November, beginning of of 2021, beginning of uh, December. This area, this time frame, all the way into January, they basically drew this trend line. And there's other reasons uh, farther to the left of it, back in time. But then they did the same thing. Like this 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 trend line, which you could have split the difference and had a general idea of where this was at that time, became more apparent when they bounced off of it here. Back on July 19 of this year, high was 565.16. That was the former all-time highs. So if they get back up to this general area, it's probably going to provide some type of overhead resistance. So now when we zoom back in to a daily chart with that trend line on the chart, you can see, well, is it any surprise that that was some resistance and they fell down yesterday? So this is yesterday's candle. There's the doji candle we got the day before. So are they going to keep going down? Are they going to find some type of range? They're going to fight here for a while before trying to break out into even higher highs. We'll see. We will find that out and have better information on Monday morning. Since I took no trades today, there is no recording to watch of any live trades. So we can jump right into the tracking log. The first one is the PBR playing by the rules log. The two base hits, pretty straightforward. There's your eight ES points. And I did not take any trades, but there's the two levels that were hit. So nothing for me. But we're looking at the two weeks here, and not not too bad. Let's say you're trading. Now, this the totals here and the averages take into account everything. But say you were just trading two ES contracts for the last two weeks, 27.75 under average. But I just want to point out that for me, because I had some pretty decent days, a little over ten thousand dollars, with especially with that big um, home run, you could call that back on 9/11. Here is year to date with just 2024 filtered out January through today, playing by the rules. Let's take a look at everything in my trades since the beginning of the year. And this is pretty accurate. And as you know, I record as many trades as possible. So you've seen most of these trades, not hide anything. I want to show everything that I do as much as possible. So, if, so you have full disclosure. That's it for today. Thanks for tuning in to today's trading recap. Hope you found it helpful. And if you're among those on my list who had the levels from this morning before the market opened and you traded them, I'd like to know if you trusted them and pulled some money out of the market today. Feel free to leave a comment or send me an email with your feedback. I would appreciate some feedback. I'm getting a little bit of feedback and it's good. Before the opening bell on Monday morning, I'll have new levels on the board. We'll do this all over again. Thanks and have a great rest of your day.